today we jump into a, a new series. And it's, it's, it, we talk about Elijah, and I've, I've never talked about Elijah uh, as a series before, and, and partially because Elijah was just so intense. Uh, and his life was a, a life of obedience to God. I'm focused on my God. And, and, and part of it is, we, maybe it's just me, but I, sometimes we think that obedience is for little kids. It's for little kids. Uh, uh, mom says, all right, it's time for bed. Go on up for bed. And, and the little kid goes, no, I'm not gonna. All right, and then, well, my old pastor's steward, my friend, would say, you don't mess with Big Mama. Because Big Mama says, I took you into this world, and I will take you out. Yes, you don't mess with Mama. You obey. You hear and you obey. You know, but Christians sometimes think this way when it comes to God. Yeah, I, maybe I'm not the only one. Maybe there's others here that says, you know, I do that. I say, God, I'm not gonna. God, I hear your voice. I'm not gonna. You know, in Luke chapter 6, J Jesus was talking with people that wanted to follow him. And then they were saying, oh, you're, you're Lord, Lord, uh, you are the Lord of my life. You are, I'm following you. And Jesus says, wait a minute. You say that I'm the, the master of your life, the leader, that you call me Lord, which means master, but you don't do what I say. You know, I'm telling you, to, this whole time I've been talking to you, I'm telling you about loving your neighbor. You know, don't, don't backstab people. Don't, don't seek revenge. Don't do all these things. But that's what you're trying to do. You don't follow me. All you're doing is saying, I'm not gonna. The life of Elijah is one of obedience. He's one of the great heroes of the faith because he heard God's voice and he did it. No, it, was, it wasn't an easy life for him, but he did it. And that's when I hope that we get out of this, that we can say, all right, where am I in this? Where am I? Do I hear God's voice? Do I, do I actually do it? Let me, let me give you a little background on, on Elijah. I'm, I'm going to read out of 1 first, first Kings chapter 16 to start. Uh, but I have to give you a little historical idea what Elijah jumps into. Let me read a little bit. It started in verse 29. Here we go. Ahab, son of Omri, began to rule over Israel in the 38th year of King Asa's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 22 years. But Ahab's son of, Ahab, son of Omri did what was evil in the Lord's sight, even more than any of the kings before him. And as though it weren't enough to follow the example of Jeroboam, he married Jezebel. Nobody names their daughter Jezebel. Do you know that? There's a reason. There's a reason. He, uh, let's go back to it. He married Jezebel, the daughter of King Ethbaal of the Sidonians. And he began to bow down in worship of Baal. First, Ahab built a temple and an altar for Baal in Samaria. Then he set up an Asherah pole. He did more to provoke the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, than any of the other kings of Israel before him. And, and let me just stop in there. You got you to hear the ideas here that, that the golden age of Israel was at least 50 years ago. There was King Solomon. Everybody looked to Jerusalem. Maybe all the other neighbors were a little weaker, but they looked to Solomon. They said, oh, he's so wise. He's setting up, there's peace in the realm. The, the, the borders are, are secure. There was wealth beyond wealth in Israel. But since that time, for the last five decades, there's been an economic and spiritual decline. For 50 years, it maybe it's not all like off a cliff, but it's been a decline for 50 years. And there's, there's a lot of people that, that instantly go to America and say, oh yeah, we've been on a decline for a while. And, and they go there. And I, I, we can go there some other day. This is where I want to start with us. Have you been in a spiritual decline? 
And, and that's just, that's a huge question. And, and, and I'd love just to stay there for, for a long time. How long have you been in a spiritual decline? Like, oh man, I used to talk with God all the time. It, it used to be so fresh for us. That, that we would talk and I would see Him all over. I would see just a, like a beautiful flower and I would say, thanks God, that was so beautiful. And the sunrise or the sunset. But it's not that way anymore. It's kind of been a decline. You know, that's, that's kind of the, the thing that we jump into once in a while. This is, as a nation, they were in a decline. But sometimes for us, that's a decline. And we need to address that. Because that's where King Ahab jumps in. That's, it's been on decline for over 50 years. And now enter King Ahab. And imagine this. This is your, this is written on your tombstone. The all time number one provoker of God's anger. Who wants that on their, their tombstone? Right? Uh, this person right here, it, he makes God angry. He's the person that makes God the angriest. He's really good at it. That's King Ahab. You know, it's, it, I, it's, we can't blame it all on him. We can't blame it all on the, the country. Boy, he married this lady named Jezebel. She was the, the daughter of the king uh, of the, the Sidonians, which is Phoenicia, you know, Philistine area. And her, and her dad was the temple priest. So she brought all of that to Israel, God's people. And, and I don't, who knows what kind of person Ahab was. Maybe he was just a, a wimp when it comes to his wife. I don't know. A lot of us guys are. I don't know. Uh, but but he, didn't, he didn't say, wait a minute. We're God's people. Well, we worship Him alone. No, he just said, oh, go, you know, bring all that uh, worship of Baal and Asherah. Bring that here so that, that people can worship as they'd like to. And that's what he did. Here's your cautionary tale, guys. Don't marry anybody who doesn't have Jesus at the center. Because disaster's coming. And, you know, I could say this for ladies as well. Ladies, don't marry some guy who doesn't have Jesus at the center. Because destruction and disaster is coming. That's what we're jumping into. You know, they, they'd abandoned this exclusive, loving, obedient relationship with Almighty God. And that's where Elijah comes in. You know, the worst king ever in Ahab, and God sends his best prophet. And let me, let me read a little bit more. Start in verse, uh, chapter 17. Now Elijah, who is from Tishbe in Gilead, told King Ahab, as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. Then the Lord said to Elijah, go to the east and hide in the Kirith brook near where it enters the Jordan River. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you, for I have commanded them to bring you food. So Elijah did as the Lord told him and camped near the Kirith brook, east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. But after a while, the brook dried up, for there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. We don't know much about Elijah. We're, we're, we're jumping into a series that we don't know about, much about his background other than he lived in some obscure village named Tishbe. But we do know this about Elijah. Elijah means Yahweh is my God. Yahweh is my God. The God of Israel, that's my God. Not this Baal or any of the other ones in the neighboring countries. Yahweh is my God. And this is how our God works sometimes. This is how he, he works. It, it, uh, the, the Phoenicians, they, they, they worshipped Baal uh, and Asherah. It's, it's a weird mess of you know, hierarchies and all that. Some other day we can read about that. 
But Baal was the god of rain and dew. He was known as the god of rain and dew. And this is how our God says, wait a minute. Don't, we're not worshiping Him here. The God of rain and dew? Ha! Let me tell you this. I'm shutting off the spigot here. There will be no rain or dew because I am the God of rain or dew and I am the God who made this universe and I am the only God worthy of worship. I'm going to show you who's the true God. And He cuts it off. And there's no rain. There's no dew. Imagine that for three years. It's quite a time. And, and, and here's the finer point here, and I want to spend a little bit more time here tonight, today. The fine point of God spoke, and Elijah, Elijah heard him. You, you hear that, right? God speaks, and Elijah hears him. And then it goes the other route of Elijah speaks God's words to the king. The idea, I hear, God speaks, I hear, and then I go do what he asks. That, that was the progression there. And the question we might have for this morning is, does God still talk to his people? Does God still talk to us? You know, the, the, some, some people say, well, God better not talk to me. Then we have to lock you up in some sanitarium. And that's not it. But does God talk with us? That's a question, isn't it? From the beginning of time, people have had this innate, just something that you can't make sense out of it yet. It will struggle within it. Is, is there a God? Is there a God? And if there's a God, can I talk with Him? How do I interact with Him? How do I communicate with Him? It's, it's ingrained in humanity. Is there a God? Is there something bigger than me? Something that made this, this entire cosmos, this universe that we know. And if there is, boy, I hope I get to talk with him. I want to hear him. I want to talk with him. So uh, this is where I'm going to go with you. And I'm, I just, more than just asking that question, I'll just tell you. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It comes out of Hebrews chapter 4. Or chapter 13. He's the same. So he spoke to Elijah. And he'll speak to us. He speaks to us as well. And you're saying, well, how does he do that? How, how does our God speak with us? And, and I'll give you just four different examples. How does our God talk with us? Let me give you one. He speaks to us in nature. In nature, it's... it's Psalm 19, it goes, The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display His craftsmanship. As in, it, it, the word for proclaim is it, it, it declares it. It shouts it. It screams it through the universe. There is a God. And you're not Him. It screams it out. You know, we in West Michigan, over the summer, we have the best sunsets in the world. It, it, how can we not see that and go, wow, God, you are such an artist. This is so beautiful. Wonderful. In nature, we have some of the best hiking areas around. To see it in nature and how nicely it fits together and how things are so complex, yet they are so together. To look at the stars at night and go, wow, how did that happen? That is so beautiful. Our God is speaking to us saying, I'm the creator. I did this. I am almighty God and you are not. Do you hear my voice? That's just one way that our God speaks to us. A second one is, is, is one much more specific to us. It's the Bible. And instantly we go, well, yeah, I've, I've got a Bible. It's, it's got dust on it, but yeah, I got one. The Bible is useful for teaching and rebuking and correcting and training. And in, we, in the Bible, we see 
everything that we've ever needed to see about our relationship with God. We read in there how, yep, I'm fallen. I'm broken. I've got mistakes. I have sin that encapsulates my very soul. And I can't get rid of it. The more I try, the more I see that I am just filled with sin. And the Bible shows us this. And and that's the bad news, but it also shows us the good news where it says, oh, you're loved. That, That God who made the universe, oh, He's got a fierce love for you. Oh, He loves you. And you're saying, well, maybe. Sometimes I'm lovable. But, and we would agree. Sometimes we are lovable. But most of the time, we're not. And our God says, it doesn't matter. I still love you. I have that fierce love for you. And all that, all that you need to do is trust in Jesus. Jesus. To pay for your sins. When He died on the cross, He paid the price for sin. You know, this, the, the Bible it screams God's voice to us and says, you are loved and I've provided a way that we might be in a relationship. Our God is speaking to us in nature through the Bible. Let me give you two last ones though. God speaks to us through His Holy Spirit. And in John chapter 14, Jesus says, all right, I'm going to go away. I'm going to die. But I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit. And this is is the part that I want us to hear. I'm going to leave the Spirit, and the Spirit will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have said. Jesus spoke to His disciples about a lot of things. They're not all written in here. And, And Jesus was saying, the Spirit will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I've ever told you. When, and this it brings it back to the Bible. What, how many times are we in the middle of something and the Spirit says, you know what? In the Bible it says this, that we know in all things that God works together for those who love Him and have been called according to His purpose. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm in a valley right now, but I've got to trust Him. I know that He's got, my, he's got me yet. I'm not falling away yet. And then when you're really in a sad place, he goes, in in Romans chapter 8, there is nothing that can ever separate you from God's love. Nothing. This is the Spirit like impressing upon your heart and your mind, this is important. Our God speaks to us through the work of the Spirit. And then, and, I have to say this part, just to have a side note on this one. If you think that God is speaking to you and it's something that goes against what the Bible says, it's not the Spirit speaking to you. Okay? So, so examples of, hey, I know that I'm married, but that woman makes me feel like a man again. That is not the Spirit talking. That is you talking. That is somebody else talking. That is Satan talking to you. Because God would never say that. Oh, and, and maybe another example. Boy, you know, I feel this righteous anger. I need to like get back at this person. Is that really the Spirit talking? Or does He say, maybe you should make some peace with that person. May, no, don't, don't backstab that person. Make some peace. Show, show love. To that person. The Spirit leads that way. Uh, There's my side note for the day. All right, good. Let me give you one last one. God speaks to His people not only through nature, not only through the Bible, not only through the the Holy Spirit and and pressing upon our our conscience, our mind, our, our very hearts. He speaks through other solid Christians. How many times have you had a good friend help you hear I just don't I'm still good it was just me Whew. thank you the, the apostle paul talks about us as as a part of the body of christ 
We, we are all a part of the body of Christ. And some of us are mouths. <laughs> Not in that way. Some of us are, are loud mouths and, and we, God says, hey, shh, quiet down a little bit, right? And we need to be quiet. But some of us are mouths that we speak God's words to His people. Some of us need other people to tell us, you know, you're wrong on this. No, no, this isn't, this isn't how God usually does things. Some of us need to hear from other people, you're loved. God loves you. I don't know how many times I've had good Christians talk with me and say, ah, I know this. I just have forgotten. I forgot. Thank you for giving me God's words that I needed to remember. You know, it's nine times Elijah was heard God's voice. Nine times he obeyed God. Because that's the question that we go to. Will we follow what God tells us? Will we, will we hear His voice and then follow? Is the, is the prayer that you say, like maybe even right now, God, I want to hear Your voice so that I can follow it. So that I can do it. Is that, is that our prayer? Because that's not always it, is it? Sometimes it's, oh, I just want to hear the good things that you have to tell me, God. I just want to hear your voice. Oh, it's so comforting. It's so soothing. It, I don't really want to do what you asked me to do, though. Come on, don't make me do that. You know, what if we, what if we didn't obey God's voice? You know, what if we heard what He said? He says, I want you to go... Show love to that person. I want you to forgive that person. I want you to tell that person lovingly that you care about them and the way that they're going in life is not as God has called them. What if we didn't do what God has asked us to do? We didn't obey Him. Now, the Bible's full of people that didn't do what God has asked them to do. Oh, they heard Him. You know, think of Jonah. Hey, Jonah, go to, go to Nineveh. I want you to Preach against them. No, no, I'm going this way. And we know how it worked out for Jonah. Oh, if I could help you. I, obeying God is hearing His voice and doing what we hear. It's doing it. And that's the toughest part. Because God is always talking to us what we should do. He's always giving us those Words of comfort, words of love, but it's, do we want to act on them? That's the tougher part. You know, John, John 6, I already talked about this, that, you know, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and the master of your life, and then you don't do what I asked you to do? It's, I get this idea that, that we want to walk on a journey with Jesus. We want to. So that we can hear Him. Oh, God, God. Jesus, that's great word. Thank you. And when we want to walk down the road of life with Him, but then sometimes we just say, hey, can you just stay there, Ryle? I gotta, I'm going to walk over here. And Jesus says, no, 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 we're walking this way. No, no, no. I, I think this is a better path. I, I can barely hear you though, Jesus. I, I, are you saying anything? I can't hear your voice. We... we purposely go away from him so we can't hear him so we can't do what he's called us to do and, and i'm not i'm not hear me on this one i don't hear I, I didn't look at your facebook page this week i don't know where your life is right now i'm just talking as your pastor that this is my world that sometimes it's like i know god you want me to go that way but i think i should stay over here I, i've said this before that that the driest time spiritually for me ever was when I was in seminary. It was in seminary. I knew that, I heard God saying, I know that you need to go this direction. I need you to be a pastor. It's like, oh, okay, okay. But I, 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 don't, I don't feel like I need to go there right now. And there was this, there was this dryness in our relationship. It was, I was so working on, on getting the theology right. 
And in learning how to be a pastor and so many things that they didn't teach me in, in seminary, I still need to learn them. But there were so many parts that I was like, all right, I'm, I've just got this distance. I, I don't know if I can really hear you, Jesus. I'm over here. You're supposed to be over here. Come on over here, Jesus. I'm not walking in His presence. I'm not walking with Him so I can hear His voice. That we can go where He would like me to go. It's like, I, I'll go that way if you go with me. The Bible is clear. It, it says, you will seek me and you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart. And then I want to close up on Elijah because there's so much more to say and, then, and I've gone so far today with, as far as time. But I want that to be our prayer this today. Just today. Just at this time and, and hopefully it carries as we go on. But I, I want it to be that, God, it's not about getting your answers. It's not about relieving the pain in my heart. It's, God, I just want to walk in your presence. I want to walk through life with you and, and go where I'm supposed to and to hear your voice and do it. I want that to be our prayer. So let's pray that. Let's have that as our closing prayer. That we might hear His voice this week. That we might obey Him. That we might go where He asks us to go. Do what He asks us to do. So pray with me. Father, Spirit, Jesus, we pray to You for Your help today. Because we know that we are so ill-equipped to follow You some days. Oh, we want to go our own way. We want to go on our own journey. And we go, ah, I can't hear You. Jesus, are You actually speaking to me? God, we ask You to do something so drastic in our hearts today that we might hear Your voice, that we might not just hear, that we might listen, that we might obey You. God, would You just upend our lives so that we might see You clearly, that we might hear Your voice, that we might go where You call us to go. God, show us Your mercy. Give us the strength we need today and each day this week, give us the joy of following after you. And we ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen.